Hello guys, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we're going to be moving on to fluid static. This is chapter number two of our syllabus and the first thing that I need to introduce to you about fluid static is the definition of fluid statics. So the proper definition is simply the study of fluids where there is no relative motion between its particles. And that is the clever way of saying it. The simple way of saying it is fluid static is the fluid that is not moving. That is very simple. Okay, and the first concept that I want to introduce to you about fluid static is the concept of pressure at a point. Okay, so pressure at a point. I believe that you are all already familiar with the concept of pressure. For example, in solid mechanics, right? Pressure is simply force divided by area. In fluid mechanics anyway, the representation of pressure is a little bit different. Okay, But before we get into the mathematical representation, there are two concepts, there are two uh, very important things that you know about pressure in fluid mechanics. So the first concept is that pressure at a point inside a fluid acts in every direction. Okay, so X on every direction. So what does it mean? Right? So basically, if you have a container filled with water, for example, okay, this is water, and this is you, almost at the bottom of the container. right? So the pressure that acts on you is coming from all directions. So the pressure is coming from here, it's coming from here, coming from here, coming from here. It comes from any direction. It comes from every direction. It doesn't just only come from the top, okay? It comes from all direction. So that is pressure on a point, okay? And the second concept that I want to introduce to you is that pressure changes in vertical direction. Okay? If you move side to side, okay? Let's erase this direction, okay? So if you move side to side, okay, if you are here or if you are here, the pressure will always be similar. We will see how this happens later. But if you change the position vertically, meaning that if you go up, then the pressure here is going to be different than the pressure here. Let's say if you have fluids in different containers, okay, let's say one looks like this, okay, and then the other one looks something like this. Right? And then the third one looks something like that. And this is what your container looks like. And this is your fluid. Okay? So your fluid is here. Now at any point, as long as the vertical distance from the top of the water is the same, so the pressure remains the same. So this means that doesn't matter what is the shape, as long as the distance here is the same, the pressure is always the same at these points, okay? But if you move vertically downward, if you move here, then the pressure will change, okay? So the pressure here is not similar with the pressure here, okay? So that's this is two very important concepts that you need to understand and you need to remember as well. Pressure acts in any direction and pressure only change if there is a vertical change. Now it's time to take a look at the mathematical representation of pressure. So pressure is simply defined as rho times g times h. Okay, so this is normal. Rho is density, g is gravity, and h is the vertical distance. And I believe that in the past few videos, you've learned about the specific weight which is gamma so gamma is equal to rho g so p is also equal to gamma h okay so p is rho g h or gamma h right and what is h h is the vertical distance for example if you have this container okay and this is your water level and this is your h okay if you want to measure the pressure at the bottom of the container so the pressure at the bottom of the container will be P equal to rho, and this is rho water times G times H, okay? And that is the pressure at the bottom of this 
container. What if you have multiple fluids inside a container? You know that the lower density fluid will stay on top of the higher density fluid. So this is let's say raw water. Okay, and let's say this is oil, raw oil. Okay, and let's just say we have two layers, right? And we want to find the pressure over here which is at the bottom of the container. So now the thickness of oil, let me call it H oil and the thickness of water is H water. Okay, so the pressure here is simply P is equal to rho oil times G times H oil plus rho water times G times H water. Okay, so it's the summation of these two pressure. Okay, so it doesn't matter how many layers you have inside a container, you just need to know the thickness of each layer and you also need to know the density of each fluid and then you will be able to find the pressure at any point inside those containers. Okay, and finally, the unit for pressure, I believe we all know the unit of pressure is Pascal. But depending on the situation, sometimes there are other units that is more suitable to the pressure. For example, we can also use the unit of pressure as millimeter Hg. Okay, what is Hg? Hg is mercury. Now, what does it mean by millimeter Hg? Okay, that means that is the pressure in terms of the height of the mercury. Because we know that pressure is equal to rho Gh. Okay, and if we know that mercury, the rho for Hg is 13,600 kilogram per meter cube. Let's say the pressure is 680 millimeter mercury. Okay, now can I convert this into Pascal? Right, it's quite simple. So simply P equal to rho GH. So rho mercury is 13,600. G is 9.81 and my H is 0 0.68. And I will end up with 90,700 Pascal or 90.7 kilopascal. Okay, now can I represent this 90.7 kilopascal in terms of millimeter water? The answer is of course you can, but now the density is the density of water. So let's do this P equal to rho GH. P is 90,700. Rho of water is 1000, G is still 9.81, and H is the H of water. Okay, so now it will be H of water will be 97, 90,700 divided by 9810. That will be 9.24 meter of water. And you can also write this as the pressure equal to 9.24 meter H2O. It is a little bit too big if you want to represent this as millimeter, but you can always do that. So this becomes 9240 millimeter of H2O. Okay, and if you notice, this is why we use mercury as the measuring device for pressure. Because to use mercury, you only need 680 millimeter. This is less than one meter. It's about this big. Okay, so if you want to use it upward So this will be the height of your mercury column, but if you want to use water You're gonna need 9.24 meter of water to measure the same pressure Okay, so 9.24 meter is almost like four-story building. Okay, so it's much more practical to use mercury as the measuring device for Pressure. Okay, now that we know how to use the pressure equation, which is P equal to rho GH, we can further study about a measuring device for pressure that is called manometer. Now, the concept of manometer is very simple. It is actually a device that used a water column or mercury column or column of any fluid to measure pressure. Now let's say that we have a pipe, okay, and this is the cross section of the pipe. Okay, and this pipe carries water, for example. As an engineer, we want to measure the pressure of this water. This can easily be done using a manometer. Okay, so how do we do that? What we need to do is that we need to tap the pipe. 
tap means you drill a little hole in order to find the pressure okay so let's say i'm i'm going to tap here right and i'm going to install a manometer and a manometer looks something like this So what happens is that the water in the pipe will go into the manometer and stops here, for example. Now because we tap here at this level, all right, we can find the pressure by measuring the distance between here to here. And let's just call this H. Okay. So let's say this is 1. So pressure at point 1 is simply rho G H. Okay. So if I call it H1, so this will be rho G H1 and rho will be rho water because in this column here is water. So imagine as if this volume of water here is pushing the fluid into the pipe. Okay. And we want to measure the pressure at this point, at this level, because that pressure is equal to the pressure inside the pipe because we know that pressure doesn't change between here and here right because it's at the same level right now let's take a look at another example let's say the pressure of the pipe is too high we cannot simply do this because then the pressure of the water will burst through your manometer so what can you do is you can put a different material you can put a different fluid inside that manometer and measure that fluid a fluid of higher density now let's say you have the same pipe Okay, but now you want to tap it and use the manometer using different liquid or different fluid. The manometer still looks the same. But now the water columns look something like this. So this is water. Right, but now this is your mercury. And let's say the mercury level goes up to here. Okay, so now how do you measure the pressure inside this pipe? Okay, now this is quite simple. So first of all, we know that the pressure here and here would be similar. Okay, why is it similar? Because it is in the same fluid. If it's in different fluid, then it's not going to be similar. So the pressure is similar horizontally only if it is in the same fluid. Okay. Now, what do we need to know is let's say we know that this is H1 and this is H2. And I'm going to label this as 1, 2, 2 bar and 3. Okay, so you know that 2 and 2 bar is at the same pressure. To find the pressure at point 1, we work backward. Okay, we work from point 3. Okay, so pressure at point 3 plus rho Hg times gravity times H1. Okay, now let's take a look at what I did. Okay, so now I want to go downward. Okay, when I go down, the pressure is getting higher. And for that reason, I use positive. Okay. So P3 plus rho Hg G H1. Okay. And then I know that at this point, if I go here, the pressure is still the same. Okay. So 2 bar and 2, the pressure is the same. But now I still want to keep going until I go to point number 1. So if I want to go to point number 1, I must go up. Isn't it? So what happens if you go up? Right? Pressure is going to be reduced. Right? So, the correct symbol here is minus rho. Okay? When I go up, now the fluid is water. So, this is rho water. G and my H is H2. Okay? And now, at this pressure, because it's in the same fluid, right? So pressure here is the same as pressure here. So that is my pressure at point 1. So this equation becomes equal to pressure at point 1. Okay. So if you don't get this the first time, so do this again and again. Make sure you know why this is positive and why is this negative. Right. So basically, let me color code this. So P3 is here. Right. And then you go down, 
meaning that you do plus rho hg, this is hg, times gravity times h1, this is h1. Okay, and now let's go to green, right? And then you go up, so this means nothing happens because 2 and 2 bar is the same pressure, right? But then you need to go up in order to reach point number 1. Okay, so if you go up, then you need to do minus because pressure reduces as you go up, right? And then the fluid here is water, okay? So this is raw water, G stays the same, and then H2 is the distance that you need to go up, okay? And then this is at the same level and the same fluid, so this is equal to P1. Right? Don't worry if you don't understand it yet. We're going to do some more example after this. But before that, I think this video is taking too long. So I'm going to end it here and we're going to move on to the example in the next video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.